A common question that my subscribers would ask me is, what's the best computer to use for coding or for doing data science? And my default answer would be any computer that you have access to is a good computer. And you don't need to break the bank in order to obtain the latest, hottest, high performance spec computer to learn coding or do data science. And if you do need high specs to run computation, there's a lot of resources out there that would provide you the means to spin up a computer with high memory or with a powerful GPU to perform those computations remotely on the cloud. And the example would be GitHub Code Spaces. And you can see here that you're given over 60 hours a month for free that you could use to spin up your own development environment on the cloud. And so let's have a quick look at some of the key features of the Code Spaces. So you could head up to github.com slash features slash code spaces and follow along. So you can see here that the code spaces or any cloud coding environment provides would be a code editor and also a web browser so that as you code, you can see the preview of what you're creating, especially when you're creating websites or creating web applications such as a Streamlit app. So Code Spaces gives you the option to select from a wide range of code editor, as you can see here, and the default would be the VS Code. And you could spin up a powerful computer that ranges in performance from a two core to 32 cores. And you can see that the RAM will be increased as the core increased. And spinning up the server or the remote or cloud computer would take you less than 10 seconds. And if you like, you could customize the development environment by creating a configuration file. So I'll show you that in just a moment. And you could customize the fonts, whether you like to have the dark mode or light mode. And as you code, you could see the preview of your applications. Right, and so here are some of the features that you could expect to have when you're using code spaces and some of the testimonials, and this is the cost. So if you're using two cores, you're getting 60 hours free a month. And if you're exceeding that, you'll pay 18 cents per additional hour. You could also get 30 free hours if you're using a higher spec. From two to four, the number of free hours that you get will reduce by half. And if you're increasing it to eight cores, then it'll be reduced to 15 hours for free. And so this is the price if you're exceeding that. So here are some of the commonly asked questions. And if you are a student, Code Spaces is available for free. And you could just sign up for a student developer pack from GitHub in order to get started. So it should be noted that this video is not sponsored by GitHub and that I honestly think that this is a very good resource for developers. So let's have a look at how you could spin up your own code spaces on GitHub. So when you log into your GitHub account, you'll notice that you have this create new drop down menu. If you click on it, you have the option to create a new code space. So go ahead and click on it. And here are some of the options that you could select from whether you want to start from a particular repository on your GitHub account. So here are some of the repository that I have. However, if you don't want to create a new code space based on an existing repository, you could go to the code spaces here in your user profile. You could click on the your code spaces and this is the dashboard for the code spaces. So you can see here that I have an existing code space running, but in order to allow more compute hours for this tutorial, I'm going to just delete this. And you can see that deleting a code space is as simple as clicking on delete. So be aware of how many code space that you have running. Otherwise you'll be consuming your free hours very rapidly. So we have already deleted it. Now we're starting from scratch. So there are no code spaces running here. And you can see here that there are several templates that are for you to use in quick starting or jump starting your own projects. You could start from blank state, or if you have a React project or you need to have a Jupyter notebook, you could use some of these templates. And there are additional ones as well. Click on see all. And so these are additional templates for you to use. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the blank template and wait for a few moments. And you'll see that your own 
code space will be spun up. And here you can select the color theme yet you like. So the default here is the light contrast here. Let's have a look at the dark mode and let's just use the dark mode here. So you'll see that you have the explorer tab right here to the left. You have the main panel here and below you have the terminal. And all of this is essentially a VS Code editor right in the browser. So this is your code spaces name, the URL for your GitHub code spaces development environment. So you're free to continue with installing and creating your own custom environment. So let's try to type in pip install and then scikit-learn. And I'll go to the scikit-learn website, go to the examples. Let's use this as an example. So let's see, what libraries are we using? We also need to have matplotlib and also numpy. So I'll head back to the code space and I'll install numpy and matplotlib at the same time using pip install and we're ready. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call it model.py and take the code here, copy it, paste the code, save it. I'll hit on command S or control S if you're on a Windows, command S for a Mac and we're ready to run it. Let's list the files that we have and we have the model.py here that's also shown in the explorer. Okay, so I think it's expecting to run if we want to show it we need to run it interactively in here. So instead of using pot show, I'm going to make it pot.savefig and then I'll give it a name for the file. I'll call it plot.png. I give it a resolution of let's say 300. I'll save it and let's run it again. All right, and we got the exported plot figure file as a PNG. Double click on it and we have it here. This is our plot. And so all of this was performed on the cloud inside your GitHub code spaces. And aside from running your machine learning models in here, you could use it to develop your Streamlit web application. Let me show you. You could clear the commands in the command line, typing in clear. I'll close the image. I'll close the model five here. Let's install Streamlit. Pip install Streamlit. Enter. And you'll notice that the internet speed on the cloud server is super fast. And so even if you don't have a fast internet connection locally, the internet connection on your cloud computer here is ultra fast. And you see that in only a few seconds, you already have installed Streamlit. And now let's create a app file. Let's call it Streamlit underscore app.py. And I'll import Streamlit as st, st.title. And then I'll add an emoji and I'll say hello world. Save it, command S. Going back to the terminal, I'll type streamlit run and then the name of the file, streamlit underscore app dot py. Hit on enter and then you'll notice here that the app will be created and you're getting a notification at the bottom right here that your app is running in port 8501 and whether you want to make it public or you want to open it in the browser. So I'll go ahead and click on open in browser and you'll see that a new tab is spun up and there you go. You have the Hello World Streamlit app right inside your GitHub code spaces. And the URL that is generated here is provided up here. And let's see that you want to make some additional changes to your code here. Let's add another line. Let's see right. Let's say, yay, it works. Save it. Go back here. You notice that it asks whether you want to rerun it. Go ahead and click always rerun and it's updated. So you could open the browser here, both of them side by side in order to code and preview your Streamlit app. Let's go back. And in order to exit the Streamlit app, you would do it as if it was a typical computer. And normally I would hit on control C and then it'll stop the app. And then the app here would not work. And you see that it is staying connecting. And if you refresh it, it should not work, right? And it's not working because it's reloading. So the connection has been detached because you have it already exited. And so I'll go ahead and type exit. I'll just close this, go back to the dashboard for the code spaces. And this is the code space that we have spun up. You'll see that we've consumed about a gigabyte of RAM. We're given 32 gigs of storage. And the maximum RAM that we have is four gigabytes. And we have been given two cores. And let's say that if you are finished coding and you want to push this to your 
repository, you could also do that. You could click on here, publish to a new repository, or you could do other stuff like changing the machine type to a more powerful one. But in order to save compute hours, click on stop code space. Otherwise it will still be active and you'll be consuming the hours. And now the code space has been stopped and then you could resume it at a later point in time. Let's show how we could publish this to a new repository. So go ahead and click on it, publish to a new repository. And let's make it public, create a repository here and it's creating and it's created. Let's see the repository. And here it is, bookish barnacle. And you have the generated plots, you have the streamlet app, and then you have the model file. Let's have a look at another example, the LLM example repository on the GitHub account of streamlet allows you to clone this LLM example demo app just by clicking here, open in GitHub code spaces, and then you'll get a code spaces with this particular LLM example app. And the underlying code for generating this is provided here in the .dev container. If you click on the JSON file here, it contains the details of the configuration of the generated code space computer. So you see the version of the Python, you see the command to install the prerequisite libraries, and now we're using the VS code. And you could click here to launch your own code spaces. And so you'll see that this GitHub code spaces is very simple to use. You could spin up a cloud development environment in only a few seconds. And I've already shown you how you could use it to run your data science machine learning projects or also to create your own Streamlit web application. And so let me know in the comment section down below if this was helpful to you. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy your journey.